let's talk about our girl, Amber Heard. Now, and Amber Heard has been talking out of their behind about the UK lawsuit. So first, let me ground everybody to what's been going on. So Amber Heard and her team are attacking us. And what I mean by us, the umbrella guy, Nick, Emily, Legal Bites, everybody who's been covering the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case. Now, why are they attacking us? Because they want good press. And they think that we are the ones who are making Amber look like the bad guy. So that's why you see now the chat is subscriber only more than 15 seconds. Um, it's because they, they're coming into all of our chats with these with monster bots and just spamming everything, spamming everything to try to make it seem like um, to try to make it problems for us. Now, they don't know that we kind of love the Amber bots, right? Because it's just more and more things that we can all laugh at them. And then they're doxing, like they dox the, um, the Umbrella guy, they dox, they try to dox Alita, they, they're just doing all this crazy stuff, right? And then they're, they're counting how many videos we do. So it's even gotten crazy on here on YouTube. So whenever I do an Amber Heard video and put Amber Heard in the title, what they did was my last video, I had it actually, it was actually already up on the site for almost a week, right? Fully great. It was, it was up, done, right? All those days was up. It had been monetized on the first day, no problems. And as soon as I make it public for you guys to see, they demonetize it. So that is what they're trying to do to, to try to make it so we don't do any more videos on her. We, now we don't know if the video is going to be demonetized until after we make it public. See, before they tell you, well, give it a, you know, make it public and give it a week and the system goes over it. And then if it's good after a week, then you're good. But right now, as soon as I put a video up, even though it's been it was it was monetized for days, as soon as you make it public, they demonetize it. So that that's kind of what they're trying to do. But as you see, that hasn't stopped me. I'm still going to be making the videos I make. So what you know, if, that, if that's your goal, it's not going to help because I'm still going to make these videos. So with that said, I'm assuming that this one's going to fall into that same realm of being demonetized because that's what they're doing. So what? So we're going to go through it and. If she doesn't like it, so what? Man? So now we had a bombshell that, that kind of came out in the past couple of days about Amber Heard. She's still under criminal investigation, which is interesting in and of itself. Let us talk about the new development. So Amber Heard is under criminal investigation in Australia, and there's some wranglings about her being under criminal investigation in the UK. But I think this is so important, so important, that I want to go through it and show exactly what's going on. Let, let me start off with what Amber Heard, after losing the trial here in the United States, her team and, and her team has been saying, she won in the UK. My God, the UK trial, the UK trial, right? We love the UK trial, the UK trial, right? You, you've been hearing it, right? So I want to actually play, let's play some of those clips about them saying, the UK trial, we, she won the UK trial, which is all bullshit, right? She didn't win the UK trial. The UK trial was against somebody else. But they've been going to the UK trial, to the UK trial, to the UK trial. So let's look at what they keep saying about the UK trial. Check this out. This is this is them trying to say, well, she actually really won, and the, the American justice system sucks, but she actually won the UK trial. So here it is. So let, let, me, let me play this. This is him, her, about the UK trial. You think on social media there's been a fair representation. There was another trial. Handled it in, with the same, dealt with the same substantive issues. Same I had trial, even more evidence trial. in. In fact, mine, my evidence was largely kept out. Really important pieces of evidence kept out. Done differently, handled differently by a, a judge instead of a jury. Some evidence is admissible in a UK court. That now, Savannah challenges her with this, right? Some evidence is admissible in the UK court. Some evidence is not. But that's where we're getting, right? So so, so, we, so she, she's going on. I went in the UK. I had all this, all this great evidence in the UK. The UK trial, the UK trial, right? It was pure. It was, the UK trial was fair, right? That's where we're getting. And let me also play her lawyer. Now, these are the talking points that they were letting out. So now let's hear her lawyer, right? Her lawyer is going to say the same thing. The UK trial, the UK trial, the UK trial. So I want to let you hear her lawyer also making those same sentiments, right? The American trial is BS. It's the UK trial. Remember, this is an American lawyer, too. So here we go. Her story. Well, you know, really what happened here is it's a tale of two trials. Tale of two trials. Johnny Depp brought a suit in the UK for the same case. Same case. And, and the, the burden UK. of proof was 
easier for him there. The son had to actually prove that it was true. And and the court found there, and we weren't allowed to tell the jury this, but the court found that Mr. Depp had committed at least 12 acts of domestic violence, including sexual violence, against Amber. So what did Depp's team learn from this? Demonize Amber and suppress the evidence. So remember, so so you see, so that that's those are the, the two great talking points that we get now, right? She won the UK trial. She won the UK trial. The only reason why she lost here in the United States is because the Dep team suppressed evidence. They were doing evil things. They were doing evil things, right? They suppressed the evidence. They were being unfair to her. So that's their whole claim. Now this criminal investigation really exposes how unfair. The UK trial was, and what evidence that they relied on the UK trial, evidence of Amber's false statements. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about, because it's better if I show you than if I just, just talk to you about it. So here is a tweet that I made earlier about the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial. Let me put it up on the screen so you guys can see it. So this is my tweet from earlier, and this is what I'm saying in this tweet. So I'm saying, Depp heard bombshell too, because I had I was looking through the UK trial, and I wanted to see like, you know, hey, what happened in this UK trial? So I was looking at the UK trial, and I said, hey, so in the UK, the judge knew that Amber had asked people to make false statements to authorities, and he still believed her claims and ignored the evidence. So when you click on this, you'll see, it says clearly here, Mr. Murphy, who was somebody she asked to, to lie for in a UK trial, said that he made his untrue statements for the Australian proceedings because of pressure that Ms. Heard put him under. He said that when he expressed discomfort at making false statements, Ms. Heard had said to him, and then he goes on, about how he was pressured into making these false statements by Amber Heard. So seeing that, I was like, well, hold on, right? If the judge knows that Amber Heard is making false statements to tribunals, to courts in Australia, and he knows that, then how are they saying this is a fair trial, right? That just doesn't make any sense to me. So then, we go on. Let me show you this other tweet. And it's essentially the same thing. Then I wrote another tweet because reading through the judgment again. So then I wrote this. The judge from the UK found that Amber knowingly made false statements under oath and pleaded guilty, but found her to be credible. With the F. Now, this is true. Now, I want to point to you in the UK judgment where the judge said that, right? So you got somebody who you're trying to rely on their credibility. You see someone saying, hey, they are trying to bully me to making false statements to courts in Australia. And then the court in Australia found that you are making false statements under oath to that court. And the judge in the UK finds her credible? What? Like, really? But... This, this is what happened. The, her team is like, you know, this is the case we want you to be. We, this is the case we want you to, to look at. So let me, let, me pull, let me pull this tweet up so you guys can see, can see the, the, the actual statement that was made. The offense to which Ms. Heard, again, this is from the UK case. The offense to which Ms. Heard pleaded guilty involving knowingly, again, I think that's important, knowingly making false statements, as Ms. Colligan said, that was not a trivial offense, but its nature is so far removed from the evidence which Ms. Heard gave in this trial that its relevance to her credibility is marginal at most. So just to be clear, just to be clear, we have a judge in the UK who's judging Amber Heard's credibility. And we now know that she's made false, knowingly false statements to courts in the past. She's knowingly told people to lie to courts in the past. And the judge says it's trivial. It doesn't work on her credibility. Like, really? Really. And this is the case they're telling us that we should rely on because it's, it's so much better. It's so much better evidence. That's what they're doing. So it is wild to hear that they are trying to make the UK case into this whole big Amber's innocent. And it's all because of the UK case, all because of the UK case. And we're not even finished. We're just, we're just starting with this UK stuff, right? We're, we're li I'm literally just getting into it. We're just starting with it. They're just saying what Amber Heard told us, we can rely on it because Amber said this and here's some evidence to back it up. But as you guys know, I like to look into this stuff and like to go deep. So I, so I actually pulled up the UK case. Before we get into the criminal the criminal investigation and why this is important, I pulled up the UK case because I was like, you know what? I don't want people to, to, to think that I'm just you know reading the stuff, reading this cliff notes. So here is the UK judgment. I'm, I'm going to share it with you right now. This is the UK judgment. So it's 129 pages. So I'm going to page... I was on page 124. So, so this is the UK judgment. I read it. You guys know I like to read all this crap. So this is the UK judgment and I went through it. 
um, you know, approved judgment. This is everything exactly what the judge went through. So, so it's right here in this judgment. I want to show you exactly what Amber Heard is being charged for when it comes to the Australian case. So matter of fact, let's, let me do this diff this way. Let me show you what's happening in Australia, and then we'll go back to the UK judgment so I can show you exactly where the false statements are in the UK judgment and how the judge relied on her false statements in the UK to come to the judgment he did. So let's look at what's exactly happening in Australia. This video is from 2000. 20 in Australia where the authorities are, are going and explaining what exactly is happening, what they're investigating. So first, le let me play this for you. And then we're going to go to the UK issue. And um, I'm going to show you exactly where in the UK judgment this all comes from. So remember, this is in Australia, and they're going to explain to you why they are and criminally investigating Amber Heard. Question this morning in relation to Amber Heard, I can confirm the department is investigating that matter. So there was um, evidence presented in the London court case which uh, suggested false statements were provided in the court case in Australia in 2016. So we are investigating that. Uh, so, thanks. so what's the timeline that, that investigation and decision made about? Um, as I understand it, the, the former state manager of uh, Johnny Depp uh, Kevin Murphy said in a witness statement that he was told that he told uh, Heard, and I quote, by email, telephone, and in person, that she could not take the dogs to Australia because the relevant paperwork and permits were not complete and the required 10 day quarantine arrangements had not been put in place. Murphy continued, Miss Heard later told the court in Australia that I had told her it was fine to bring the dogs into Australia. That is false. I never told her this. Yes, so Senator, we understand that to be the case or the evidence provided in the London court case and giving a false testimony is an offence under the Crimes Act. So that is what we are now investigating. So that is what the Australian authorities are criminally investigating about Amber Heard. The fact that she gave these false witness statements in the UK trial, but also gave false statements in Australia, right, about it. So now let's take this down and now let's go to the UK judgment to see exactly where the false statements to remember. Remember, let's remember what they said, Mr. Murphy, right? We're talking about Mr. Murphy, false statements in the UK. So let, let's go right to that judgment and show you. And I know nobody else is showing you this, right? Nobody's going into the UK judgment like this, but I'm going to go into a why because you, you're here today and I, and I thought it would be interesting to look at it. So <laughs> let's, let's check it out. So we're going to go to the UK judgment 142. And this is where they're going to talk about our friend, Mr. Murphy and Amber Heard, forcing him to make these false statements or, or trying to coerce him to make these false statements to the court. And here we go. So remember, we're talking about Mr. Murphy. So here it is. So this is the, the judge in the UK case. This is what he's saying. So I turn to Mr. Murphy. He did sign a statement for the Australian proceedings on 13th of October, 2015. In the course, he said, although Mrs. Depp, Amber Heard, initially instructed me to make arrangements for the dog to travel to Australia in April 2015, it was Miss James, an Australian citizen, who assumed the primary responsibility of preparing the necessary travel-related paperwork to permit the dog to travel with Mrs. Depp to Australia. However, prior to the trip to Australia, Mrs. Depp terminated Miss James' employment. She fired her. And that was her assistant, the one that didn't like, the one that testified. I think this is the one that testified that didn't like her. But anyway, so she fired that assistant. However, prior to the trip to Australia, she, she terminated. Nevertheless, I was under the impression that prior to her termination, Miss James had arranged for all the necessary travel-related paperwork for the dogs to legally travel to Australia. Miss James never indicated otherwise. He added, per the household policy, Mr. Depp and Mrs. Depp would not have traveled with the dogs to Australia if they didn't believe all necessary travel-related paperwork had been completed. So he's going through like, okay, there was, here was a confusion. In a second witness statement for the proceedings dated 23rd of June, 2020, this is where we started getting in trouble. Mr. Murphy says that his declaration contained statements that were not entirely true. Essentially, he lied, right? Because <laughs> he, he doesn't want to go purchase, but he's like, all right, these statements that I made weren't true. Again, I'm reading the UK case. This is how the judge came to his conclusion that Amber Heard was credible. He says it was untrue that Miss James had responsibility for the paperwork and had not completed it. And that this was the reason why Miss Heard traveled with the dogs to Australia without the necessary paperwork. So he said that what he had said before was untrue. He was lying before when he said it was someone else's fault. He's like, well, that's not true, right? <laughs> you know, that she had the responsibility for paperwork and not completed it. Problem, right? The true position, so this is the truth now, is that he was responsible for the paperwork, which I could not obtain in time. 
and that Ms. Hurd was fully aware of this in advance of traveling to Australia with the dog. Let's be fair. You got somebody who, are you lying then or are you lying now? Are you lying when you told when you told us that it was this person's responsibility and she dropped the ball? That's why this whole mistake happened? Or are you lying now when you're saying that that's not happening? So he's going to have to show me some proof, right? He's going to have to show something else. We can't just accept this word because obviously he's trying to see why I am stuff, right? Something happened. So what proof does he have that what he's saying now is true. Because if, if he doesn't have any proof or anything now to say what he's saying now is true, then we shouldn't believe him, right? We shouldn't believe him. We should be just as skeptical of this new statement as this old statement. But let's see. He's going to show, he's going to say, he's going to show us how, how we can trust this new statement over this old statement. And let's remember, too, Amber was convicted of knowingly making a false statement. So obviously, he bought some receipts. Mr. Murphy says that Miss Hurd was aware of the difficulties regarding the dog's pa- paperwork. He exhibits a series of emails. So number one, we got emails between him and Ms. Heard from March 28, 2015 to, to the 1st of April, 2015. On the 31st of March, 2015, Mr. Murphy emailed Ms. Heard to ask whether she should discontinue her travel paper process, whether he should continue, discontinue the travel paper process. He said earlier that the dogs would not be allowed to fly commercial in the passenger compartment to Australia. And he asked whether Miss Heard would be content for them to fly as cargo. Miss Heard said she was not willing to let them fly cargo to Australia. The last email in the chain was from Miss Heard, who wrote on April 1st, 2015, yeah, presumably dis- dis- discontinue the travel um, paper process unless there's another way to get them there or to get them on the plane with Jay. I can't send them cargo. It's too dangerous. So then... He has come 140, I'm 142. So just so we're clear, we were at in this process. Mr. Murphy, first he said it was the person they fired for. Then he said, okay, I lied about that. And he said, you know, I told her and, and, and then this whole thing happened. Then he says to prove that she knew that these were lies and that all this stuff happened. Here's the emails and all the correspondence between me and Ms. Heard, right, to show that she straight up was lying because she knew that they couldn't go and she took them anyway. And she had me lie to you guys because she didn't want to get in trouble. So that's where we got, that's what we got going on. And again, this is what the UK court, this is a testimony the UK court disregarded to say that Amber Heard is, is, is credible. Again, you're not going to, they, they're not saying, they're not going to tell, tell anybody else this, right? This is, this is, this is what, the, this is buried in 129 pages of judgment. Mr. Murphy said that he made his untrue statement for the Australian proceedings because of pressure from Ms. Hurd put him under. He said that he expressed discomfort at making false statements Ms. Hurd said to him. Well, I want your help on this. I wouldn't want you to have a problem with your job. Mr. Murphy says that he was relieved when the Australian proceedings were settled without him having to go to Australia to give false evidence in accordance with his witness statement. So he was ready to give false evidence. He says that nevertheless, he felt uncomfortable about the statements which he had made after Ms. Heard filed for divorce from Mr. Depp. Mr. Murphy instructed a Los Angeles law firm, blah, 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 in May to seek a divorce. I think it's May, in May to seek a divorce on retracting his declaration from the Australian proceedings. So this guy had all this stuff. He knew he had lied. And then he went and showed the evidence that he had lied. And the court in Australia totally disregarded, said, hey, we don't care about this. We don't care about the fact that she's asking people to lie. They've got evidence of her lying. We don't care about any of that. We're just going to believe her wholesale, right? Because it's it's irrelevant to us. This is why the Australian authorities were like, there's an issue here, you know? If, if, If they're admitting to lying to us in the UK under oath, then what the hell? What can we, you know, we, we got we to gotta investigate this and, and stop these people. So now you see the Australia, the Australia court relied on Amber Heard knowing that she had pleaded guilty to lying to courts in Australia. And then this same court, this UK court, also, on top of that, treated the donation to seven, of $7 million to charity as another plus for Amber. Right? She didn't give that money. She didn't give any money to charity, right? It was, it was, I think Johnny gave the first hundred thousand, but she didn't give it. She's like, no, give me all the money. And the the court in the UK also said, you know what? The fact that she did that, that, that she gave this money, we're gonna take that and we're also gonna make it seem like she has better credibility. 
So let's look at that. Let me let me sh- let me show you how the court treated this charity thing. Here it is, the charity. This is in the judgment. Let me make sure you guys can see this, but it says right here. I'm starting here. The principal element of that statement was the payment to her by Mr. Depp to seven million U.S. Miss Hurt's evidence that she had given the sum away to charity was not challenged on behalf of Mr. Depp, and the joint statement issued by Mr. Depp and Miss Hurd as part of the deal point memorandum acknowledged that this was her intention. I recognize that there are some elements to the divorce settlement as well, but her donation of $7 million to charity is hardly the act you would expect from a gold digger. So the court in the UK also said, well, she's credible because she gave the money away. And now we know that's not a lie. So really think about this, that this is a he said, she said case. And you got a witness. Now, you know, they're going around to courts all around the world, making these false statements and lying to people, right? And you got evidence of that. You got hard evidence of her lying in Australia. That's what she's being investigated now. Then the court in the UK says, well, we're going to disregard that, right? We're going to believe her. But then they're also going to believe another false statement she makes about donating the money to charity, right? She donated this money to charity. And the court says, well, if it's true that her motive was just to get money from the guy, why would she give it all to charity? Why would she give it all to charity? So the judge is like, I believe that. I believe that. I believe she gave the money to charity. That makes her credible. And, I, and I'm going to disregard all the lies she's told under all this other stuff, right? Crazy. Crazy. So now, the Australia, that, that piece that you heard from Australia was about two years ago. So Australia now has come back, right? Because people are like saying, so what happened to that? They came back and clarified what they're up to now. I want to show you what's going on now. So I've given you a little history about what happened with the judge in the UK. But again, they're saying the UK is so strong. With the judge in the UK. Now let's talk about what's happening now. Because Australia is like, yo, we're, we're not going to be played like this, right? We're, we're, this is not going to happen. We're not going to be played like this. You're not going to use us as patsies in your, in your lives. So Entertainment Tonight, which is here, they recently, um, as of yesterday... Asked their Australian officials, what's up with this thing? What's, what's going on? You know, are, are, are you guys still investigating? And let's read what they say. So this is, this is the Australian officials talking about whether they're investigating Amber Heard, who was convicted of lying to them, right? <laughs> who was convicted of lying to them. How they going to um, continue this? So here it is. Amber Heard is still being investigated in an ongoing perjury case in Australia. Amber Heard's legal troubles are now weeks after losing against her ex Johnny Depp in a a defamation trial, Entertainment Tonight has learned that the 36-year-old actress is still being investigated in an ongoing perjury case in Australia. Here we go. In a statement to Entertainment on Tuesday, a spokesperson for the Australian Department of Agriculture, Water, and Environment said the Department of Agriculture, Water, and Environment, the department, is investigating the allegations of perjury by Ms. Hurd during the court proceedings for the 2015 illegal importation, importation of her two dogs to Australia. The spokesperson confirm this case is ongoing. And then they go into Depp and Herbie are married in 2015, and then they had the two Yorkshire Terriers. The Yorkshire Terriers failed to go through customs and adhere to Australia's required 10-day quarantine in July 2015. The actress was officially charged with two counts of illegally importing drugs, but after pleading guilty to what? Falsifying travel documents in court, the case was closed. It's all being exposed, right? She lied to the court in Australia. She gave false statements. They have the receipts to show she lied. And they're still investigating her. She's still under criminal investigation here because they got the receipts. And it's shocking that the court in the UK relied on the lie. The lie. Remember, they relied on the lie that she gave all this money to charity. They relied on the lie that she had this great credibility and that this UK stuff was nonsense, right? They relied on on this, and Amber Heard and her team are saying, we should trust the UK case over the American case when we know that that judge relied on false evidence and disregarded the fact that she was going around lying to courts all over the country, all over the world, all over the world, right? Australia, she lied. The UK, she lied. In the United States, she lied. She's going on. on, on she's, she's, how many continents is that, right? She's, Australia's one. The UK, she, she's going three. She's lying in courts on three different continents. Three different continents. And the judge is saying, you know what? I believe you, Amber Heard. I believe you. And you know what? And I, I believe you so much because you gave that $7 million of charity. I believe that too. 
Just imagine now, now, if you take all those facts, is there any reasonable person who will believe what she's saying? Now that you know? No, no. But that's what they want you to believe, right? The UK trial was the trial of the century. It works, it works. No, no, no. Nobody believes that UK trial. And this is the reason why, if you just look into the UK trial, you can see it's obviously that one judge, that one judge didn't, you know, he, he went, it seems like, out of his way to make Amber Heard's, to make Amber Heard's side win. He went totally out of his way. So at the end of the day, it's, it kind of gets to me. Oh, matter of fact, I want to play this for you guys, too. I forgot to play this. I want to play this. This is their apology. Now, remember, this apology from the, the Australia incident, which I'm going to play, is this is all because, and I want, want to make it very clear, Johnny Depp didn't have anything to do with this, right? This is Amber, Amber Heard knew the dogs needed to be quarantined. She knew of the procedure. The paperwork wasn't going to be in time, and she did it anyway, right? She did it. She brought them in anyway. Then, on top of that, on top of that, she then lied to authorities about bringing it in, right? She then lied to authorities and then tried to convince somebody else to also lie. He did lie to authorities, right? So you have all of that. You have them lying to authorities. JD didn't really have anything to do with this. But now here's the apology they made after she made all these lies. She had other people lies. And this, this is the public apology they had to make. So check this out. This is the, let's look at their public apology. With a treasure trove of unique plants, animals, and people. It has to be protected. Australia is free of many pests and diseases that are commonplace around the world. That is why Australia has to have such strong biosecurity laws. And Australians are just as unique, both warm and direct. When you disrespect Australian law, they will tell you firmly. I am truly sorry that Pistol and Boo were not declared. Protecting Australia is important. Declare everything when you enter Australia. <laughs> so he's got to make this hostage video because she goes there and she lies. And she lies to everybody. And she says, hey, this is what's going on. This is, you know, I've done it. I've done it. I've, I've done everything. Telling people a lie about her. And now he's got to do a hostage video because his wife violated the law. And, and such a compulsive lie that she's lying all over the place. He's like, I, you know, you should have filled out the paperwork. What the hell? We could have flew them in later. Let me give you entertainment tonight. Before we move on from this, let me give you entertainment tonight. Their little clip on what's going on with this. So let's look at Entertainment Tonight's little workup about it. Let me add this to stream. So here's Entertainment Tonight, what they're saying. What's Amber dealing with now? Well, a spokesperson at the Australian Department of Agriculture, Water, and the Environment tells ET they're investigating allegations of perjury by the actress during court proceedings for the 2015 illegal importation of her two dogs into the country. Perjury is, of course, lying under oath. You'll recall when Amber and Johnny were still married, they brought their two Yorkshire Terriers, Pistol and Boo, into Australia without declaring them, despite the country having a strict quarantine policy. You and your wife got into some, I don't know, is it legal trouble? Is, it, is that a thing? Uh, with Jimmy Kimmel. He went to Australia, Didn't shooting do. Pirates of the Caribbean. Indeed. I'm going to move this up. 10-day quarantine in July 2015. 10-day quarantine in July 2015, Amber was officially charged with two counts of illegally importing the animals. And how are the dogs? Are they good? <laughs> yes, they're good. <laughs> Despite attempts by certain rogue uh, thug Australian government officials, they are all right. Uh, we were wondering, cause it became like this snowball effect it's out amazing. of nowhere. I cannot believe that this. We, it's a sad state of affairs um, that that made such headline global news. I'll just say that, it is sad. They're back on American soil. Yes, my little Yorkies are with me. That following year, Johnny and Amber even issued an apology for not- So, again, this is a woman who went to Australia, lied under oath, got convicted for lying under oath, got somebody else to lie under oath. Then they got receipts of her giving emails, you know, hey, I'm lying under the oath for Amber. And now she's being investigated for the, for the crime of perjury. And this is the person, right, <laughs> who, who the UK judge says is credible, so credible, 
that she believes the whole story. Oh, yeah, and, and let's not forget, she also gave that $7 million to charity. This is what we're dealing with, people. So next time somebody comes to you with this whole, she won in the UK, she won in the UK, understand, the UK seems to be BS, right? She may have won in the UK, but if anyway, but if any judge goes over that, then she should have lost. This this is crazy. So that's the Amber Heard Johnny Depp thing. Let me know in the com- you know what? Let me know in the comment section after this video. What do you think about this Johnny Depp? Do do you think does it make you? Because right now the the PR battle is between the UK judgment and the American judgment. But now we know for a fact the UK judgment relied on false testimony and it's held Amber Heard to be credible after knowing that she knowingly lied to authorities under oath before in a different country, right? So if you're looking at, if you're trying to compare those judgments, I would be more, I would be, I would be more convinced by the American judgment where all this evidence came in, more evidence, more everything. Everybody got their chance to speak. Amber Heard was a party to the case and the people found her to be a, a to be a lying scumbag versus the UK trial where the judge disregarded the fact that she's lying all over the all over the world in all these different courts and making all these false things and pressuring other people to lie and giving money that they're saying she gave away money that we know she didn't give away, right? Which one would you rely on mostly? I would I would tend to rely on the American judgment rather than this than this um, UK judgment by a judge who seems to have gone out of his way to find Amber credible.